the mission of Florio is personal. It starts with my own experience with my wife. When my son reached two years old, this video was taken slightly before, he had regressed in speech from having five words to none. His behavior had gone from extremely happy to frustrated. This experience is common for over a million families in the US. Over the next nine months, through a winding process, we would eventually have a diagnosis to give us some construct for what was going on with our son. We joined a large community of families that are dealing with this every day. And life is difficult among many di di dimensions for both the children and the families. This is just one stat that helps put it into economic perspective. For families, who are looking for services to help their children with social and communication skill development, common in autism. They find immense challenges with accessibility and affordability. Depending on where you live, you have access to services or you don't. Depending on your insurance, how Medicaid is structured in your state, what your personal income is, you have access to affording those services. Depending on the jobs that you and your spouse have, the logistics of actually reaching the recommended hours of therapy can be completely out of reach. And so while going through all of this, when my son had just turned six, he tried out virtual reality for the first time. He loves maps and navigations. He has a deep obsession with going through Google Maps. And Google Street View VR had just come out. We let him give it a go. He tried it out. He was so happy. And you're looking for these special levels of engagement when you have a son on the spectrum. He had pretend play interactions with us, which we hadn't seen before. He had conversations with us that opened a different level of engagement than we'd seen. And that's when the light bulb went off. What if this could be used as an intervention medium? And through rinsing and repeating over the course of, oh, sorry, through rinsing and repeating over the course of uh, the 2016, we built a product. The product is based on using virtual reality as a teaching medium. We're focused on affordability and access. So we're doing this in Google Cardboard. We're using mobile VR. And the key insight that we had when working with my son was that when he puts the headset on, we have no idea what he's seeing. And so part of the technology is to stream in real time, wirelessly, exactly what the child is seeing to enable real time coaching in the moment. Beyond that, we enable data collection that is not possible in conventional therapy. And from the very beginning, as a family who was bombarded by junk programs and solutions for families with autism, it was very important for us to have a research-focused mindset. So I'm going to show you one of our lessons. This is our first lesson we built. It's around a very key developmental skill called joint attention. That's a shared experience between two people. It's foundational for conversation for all forms of social development. It's one of the first things that therapists work on with the child after a diagnosis. Some of our lessons are guided by the system. Some are guided by what we call the monitor, the adult working with the child, which I'll show you in the next lesson. And in some cases, are, they're child directed, which is also very important uh, when working with people on the spectrum. They have a freedom. So open world style interactions can be really powerful. We're gonna switch gears. I'm gonna show you the perspective from, from the tablet view. But first I want, uh, I want to ask a question. Who knows what this scene is from, what this picture is from? Yeah. yeah. The, uh, that, that's right, in Florida. So this happened in July 2016. An individual with autism wandered from his home. A therapist was trying to help him get back to the home. Someone called the police. Gestures and physical actions were interpreted dangerously, and the therapist was shot. He survived, thankfully, uh, traumatized the individual with autism. And when you talk to families with autism, this incident ha has seared their memories. Even though it didn't make front, line, front page news because no one died, it was a big deal. And so I'm going to show you a set of lessons we're developing for training individuals with autism on how to interact with the police. We have built these lessons in cooperation with the Montgomery County Police Department outside of DC. And it's the basis of our NIH grant with Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. In fact, as part of this research, 
In the next phase, the Philadelphia Police Department will actually be interviewing the subjects after they go through the intervention. We use the adult to essentially assess the quality of the answer. So imagine that the person in VR said hi. They can press the next button. And then from there, a follow-up dialogue will appear. So in this kind of interaction, they can say sure, something that would be a way to keep the conversation going. And now the officer said, what are you doing here? You could imagine, if they can answer this question with composure, it de-escalates the whole situation. But if they're looking at feet, they're looking off to the side, their hands are flapping or in their pockets, all of those could be interpreted as in a volatile way. That's what we want to coach. And maybe we need to reprompt the child. So the interface allows a few levels of reprompting, such as an incomplete answer. The idea being to create a little bit of dynamism so that they can navigate the situation. And then we transition into elopement related uh, information. So people with autism can wander from their homes, not know how to get back. And so we try to coach. And so we try to coach key identifying information so that if they get lost and need help from strangers, they can repeat it. And in the VR environment, we're able to simulate some of the intimidation that you feel from the officer glowering at you, asking these questions. This is one of the easy lessons. The officer is very friendly. In subsequent lessons, we amp the audio distractions in the background. We use a more intimidating officer. The language gets a little harsher. There's background traffic in some cases, all to essentially help with eventual generalization. So if, God forbid, an individual finds themselves in the situation, they navigate it safely. So I wanted to quickly share, because I know some of you are entrepreneurs looking at areas to build technology for, for purposes, what has been helpful for us in getting to this stage? Key to that has been finding great partners. As a startup, you just don't have enough expertise for all the angles you have to cover. We were able to find a special needs school in New Jersey very early that was willing to be a pilot site. Additionally, our relationship with Children's Hospital gave us access to top-notch researchers, the ability to go to NIH and get grant funding, and then Centria and the Children's Spot, the two you see on the bottom, they're leading autism therapy companies, delivering services covered by insurance. Eventually, this needs to be a business that is commercial, and so we have to build something that works within the system of how services are delivered today. We're lucky enough to have two paying customers today, um, as well as a number of school districts and therapy companies trying this out. <coughs> but I want to talk about the research and give an idea of the structure we've been able to build to build validation that this actually can work. Ultimately, all of this doesn't matter if it doesn't lead to the people going through the training actually performing better in the real world. So we designed a pilot with the school Celebrate the Children that ended up involving 12 kids between 9 and 16 years old. These were kids who were fairly Im impacted by autism. Half were nonverbal. Five-week pilot, three times a week intervention over 15 minutes, working on those skills joint attention that I talked about earlier. We did benchmarks on their joint attention skills a week before and four weeks after to be able to test whether any improvements had accumulated. These lessons were delivered by a special ed teacher. Now, the goal of Florio is eventually to be in the hands of every parent who wants access to it, but we were starting with someone that could be easy to train. And we were able to actually present the pilot design at a digital medicine conference last December called Node Health and do a presented poster. The results ended up being far and above beyond our uh, expectations. The biggest fear amongst most people who have autism around them is that will they actually tolerate wearing a headset day after day after day? What we found, and I'll show you some video in a second, is that kids love virtual reality. And these kids in particular took to it at an extremely high rate. The first day a few kids had hesitation, but after that first day, once they could see other kids doing it, once they could try out some of the simpler experiences we've built, they hopped onto it and we had essentially 100% completion rate after the first session. More importantly, 10 of the 12 kids actually showed improvements on their skills, which we were blown away by. These were kids that likely had received thousands of hours of therapy at this point. And then, as importantly, the teachers actually liked using it, as did the kids. 
key to getting there is rinsing and repeating frequently. We've been able to use children's museums and exhibitions for families with special needs as venues to get quick impressions of new content and uh, ways of explaining the product to parents. Again, one of the things that really uh, puts people at ease is when they see a video like this and they understand how kids with autism gravitate to using VR. It feels natural very quickly. The sensory issues with putting the headset on have not manifested as feared. And it seems to go across a wide array of kids who have had technology experience and who have not. We've been able to also get feedback frequently. And this is something that for entrepreneurs I highly recommend. On a scale of one to five, how would you rate the app? Just ask them really fast right after they finish the demo with their parents. Would you recommend this to a friend? You know, be able to build a way to understand whether you're headed in the right direction. So the kids are asked, do you want to do the session or not at the beginning? And then they go into the intervention. They're going through a scene related to the safari park scene I showed earlier, except here they're responding to a pointing action by a virtual avatar. That pointing action then points at one of the animals. If they find it, the animal delivers the reward. And here, you see the same lesson, except once you put something like this in teachers' hands, they can ask other questions and work on other skills. So adding language lessons is easy for teachers once they have a platform. And a lot of people ask this question, is Google Cardboard good enough for VR? It's plenty realistic for the kids. We've also built lightweight scenes that can be used as quick rewards for kids who need extra motivation. So he does the first task, but then he wants to take a quick break. And so we have a simple scene that's built around a 360 xylophone where your gaze activates the keys to play music. It's very popular with the kids, and the teachers incorporate it in different ways based on different children's needs. And then key when working with this population is making sure that they feel good about doing this. And that includes asking them for surveys at, at every, every session. So thank you.